ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Tonight we are going to start a basic guide on farming in Farm Simulator 17. We're going to show you how to use the base equipment that comes with your farm, what each piece is for, and what you're going to do with all those pieces of equipment, how to operate them. Uh, if you've been playing this game already and you are feeling lost, that's what this tutorial is for. If you are a pro and you've already got your own farm started and you've been, you know how to grow crops and fertilize and all that good stuff, uh, you may find this video boring. So move along. <laughs> There's nothing to see here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. But like I said, if you're a noob and you have no idea what you're doing, uh, we're going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we have in our menu here is uh, the career. And we are on the PC for this, but I'm going to use everything default so that you guys will have these things. So I'm going to go to, we're going to pick an empty save game, which is 12. And we're going to click continue. We're going to play on normal. That means that we have to plow. It means that we're going to have to um, fertilize the field using three stages. And so that's going to be a little bit difficult for us to um, achieve that, but that's where we're going to go. And I'm going to go on the default map, Goldcrest Valley. We have th two maps that come with the game. If you're playing on the Nintendo Switch, you'll just have these two. You'll have Goldcrest Valley. If you click these arrows up at the top, you'll have also Soznovka. Soznovka is a Russian map. It's a little bit harder to play because you start with a lot less equipment. Um, and so, and a lot less field space. So, um, if you want an easy game, Cold Crest Valley. If you want a challenge, Soznovka. If you have the Platinum Edition, you will also have this map called Estancia Lapacha. Lapacho, sorry. Estancia Lapacho. Um, but we're going to go on Gold Crest because that is our default map. Most people play on this one. Um, here we go. And I'm going to use Nomads. Nomads. That way we can, for those of you Switch users, you can also use this guide. Now, once again, the buttons aren't going to line up. I'm using a, a steering wheel and a joystick um, for my front loader controls. So I have a very different button layout than you're going to have. You'll have to figure out what buttons do what by following the help menu. Uh, I'm not going to do the guide to tour today. The first thing that you'll notice is that the clock is set at fast forward 5. The best way for you console users is to hit escape or to hit your, um, I think it's, pause the pause button and that'll open up this menu and you'll notice on this menu you can have these two arrows at the top your bumper buttons up the top will move these if you're on a computer you can use your mouse and we're going to scroll over until we see um, our time which is on the game settings menu you can see here at the bottom here the time scale is five I'm going to turn that down to one so it's real time so for every hour in real life we have an hour of game life um, you can speed and slow up if you want to grow your crops faster. You can speed up time, but I would recommend while you're doing field work and while you're doing growth and stuff like that, you don't want to do it fast forwarding while you're planting because what's going to happen is parts of the crop are going to start to grow before you're done planting the field <laughs> and you'll have a very uneven field. So set your time scale to real time and then begin farming. Once you're done and everything's planted, you can then speed up time. But um, there's some other things that you can do here, but we're not going to mess with these settings. You can, we'll kind of, these are more advanced. If you hire helpers, um, I usually just turn these off and then supply them myself. But if you don't want to go to the store and buy the helpers, fertilizer, seed, and all that stuff, you can set this to on and they'll buy it. Keep in mind that allowing helpers to buy fertilizer, seed, and stuff like that costs extra money. It's cheaper if you supply them yourselves. Uh, and the computer will let you know if they run out of something. Like, let's say you've got a guy out there and he's seeding and he runs out of seed. You'll get a message on screen that says helper A has run out of seed his or his seeder's empty. So then you'll need to drive out there, fill it back up again, and then you can rehire the worker and he can continue. Um, I like to start my own engine. I turn it, this automatic start off. Stop and go braking is up to you. Um, but you can hear, see on normal, uh, we have set our game on normal, like easy, medium, hard. We're on medium right now. You can see here um, uh, that the withering is on. So what happens is if you don't harvest the crop in, let's say, 24 hours, it's going to go bad and you're going to lose it. Um, periodic plowing is on. That means every three crops that you grow on the field, you have to plow. And last but not least, fertilizer states three. If you want to make the game easier, you can turn that to off or to one. <laughs> but um, actually, you always have to have at least one. And we'll talk about fertilizing the field as we go planting. So let's get uh, out there into the game and get started. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice, once again, I talked about buttons. Um, 
if you once again go into that menu and we're going to go back to our general settings we're going to turn the help window on and if i go back you'll notice that up in the uh left hand corner of the screen there it tells me my controls if i press the f key it turns my light on you can see my flashlight turning on and off uh if i get into a vehicle as i get close to this truck you'll see that see how it says e for enter your help screen will tell you what buttons to press to do these actions once again if you have a PS4 that you're playing on, um, it'll tell you to like hold the right bumper and press A or something like that. It'll tell you the combination to do it. If I get in here, now I have a whole list of commands that I can do. If I press the enter key, it starts the truck. And then the different buttons on my joysticks do different things. There's my honk button. I can turn the headlights on and off. Um, my joystick controls that flatbed. You'll have bumper controls on your controller that will do that. But you can see here I can lower and raise the pickup, the back of the pickup truck. Um, if I press L, if I have something loaded in the back of the pickup truck, I can fasten it down using these tension belts by pressing on my computer. It's the L key, but whatever it's mapped to on yours, that's up to you. <laughs> I'm going to turn the engine back off here. We're not going to take the pickup truck. Um, but that's the idea. Once you get used to the controls and you have them mesmerized like I do, I'm just going to turn that back off. And then you don't have to have it cluttering your screen. Um, I've got all my controls memorized pretty much. You'll see. I do screw up quite often. So uh, we've come into the field. We have several fields in several different conditions. Uh, when your crops turn brown like this, they're ready to harvest. If they turn gray, they're dead and you've lost them. We'll move on up to this field here. And you can see here on 14, uh, each field is numbered, by the way. Um, we have a field that's been harvested already and we have stubble left over. See how this is stubble? Uh, and then last but not least, we have a field over here um, that has been what's called cultivated. And the cultivator basically is, the cultivator runs over here and rips all this stuff off, all that stubble off, and gets it ready for planting. Once the field's been cultivated, you can plant. However, none of these fields have been plowed. If you want the best yield, you're going to want to plow these fields because none of them, these fields all need to be plowed right now. So if we look at our map, this is how we tell. I'm going to press the start button or escape key on my keyboard. And I'm going to go back here to the map. And this is an important screen for you. Um, it tells you right here what's on your fields. Uh, right now we have nothing on field 12. You can see if we put it over here next to the key on field 14, what was that field? That field had canola on it. It's gone, but it had canola. Uh, here on 15, it looks like we are growing, if I match those colors up, yep, we have wheat. So there's wheat. If I click on this button, we go to the growth stages, and this will tell us how the status of each field. So this field has been cultivated. This field here has been harvested. You can see that purple matches the harvested right there. We can turn that on and off too by clicking on the color, by the way. If I click on that, it goes on and off. Um, and then we can also see that, whoa, 15 is ready to harvest. And it's in the last stage, it looks like, if I match those colors up. Or middle stage. We have yellow, orange, and very orange. And right now this one's orange, so it's it's already past one stage. If we let that go for another couple hours, it's going to be dead. So you can see here, um, it'll show brown if it's dead on the map. Now, if we go to the next tab here, up, 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 see where I say growth, and here we have the types. Once again, we have growth. Last but not least, we have soil composition. All of these fields need plowing. You can see that. And those are the only fields that own all the map, the whole map they need plowing. Uh, but um, you can see here in fruit types. Uh, or if I turn the plow off, none of them, 15 uh, is already fertilized all the way. These have no fertilization on them. There's several different ways to fertilize. I'm going to teach you some of those methods. Uh, this game handles each layer of fertilization the same. In real life, Farmers will check their soil. If they need nitrate nitrates, they'll get some nitrates and use, uh, they get a big tank, and they go out there with a tractor and they, they inject nitrate into the soil. Um, if they find that, um, like once the crop starts growing, they'll throw down, I think it's called N or PK. There's two different types of fertilizer. Um, they check the soil and see what they need, and they throw that down. Um, if the soil is acidic, They'll put lime into the field and they'll cultivate it into the field. Uh, a lot of times before they plant seeds, they'll put manure down or slurry. Uh, in this game, does have it doesn't have NPK and it doesn't have lime, 
but it does have slurry and it does have manure. So in real life, before I would go on to field 12, I would have plowed it. And um, actually, in, I think in real life, they put the manure down first, then they plow it, then they cultivate it, then they um, plant, and they add the solid fertilizer when they plant. Um, and then later on, they'll spray it um, with, uh, they'll weed it and they'll spray it with all kinds of pesticides and stuff. But this game considers all of those things base fertilizer. It does not separate them into categories. You can do them in any, if you wanted to just go out and buy a sprayer and spray every field <laughs> three times to make up your fertilization, as long as you get it before the final grow stage, it'll count as three, uh, you'll get a full yield of fertilization. So it's a little hokey in this game. They don't make you do different kinds of fertilization. You could just spread manure three times and it would work. Uh, the only one that doesn't work multiple times is weeding. Weeding weeding will only work on the first stage of fertilizer or first stage of growth. Um, and what's weeding? Well, I'll show you that real quick. We're gonna go into our store and we're gonna look at there's a there's a weeder category and these two weeders that you can buy, these actually weed the field and that if you do that after the plants pop, like when they grow their first stage, you can run the weeder over them and, and weed. So uh, we're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves here, but that's the basic idea with the fertilization. You need to do three stages. It doesn't matter how you do them or what you use. You can do them in any, you can take slurry and put it on an already growing field. Now, real farmers wouldn't do that. And I think slurry is basically cow whiz. So <laughs> mixed with other stuff uh, and pig whiz. And so if you take cow whiz and spray it on your plants, I don't think they're going to be too healthy. Um, if you put it down before they start growing and it has a chance to get into the soil and add nutrients to the soil and then they start growing using that, they'll be healthy. But I don't think you're supposed to put slurry or manure down in real life after the crops start growing. But in this game, you can. <laughs> so do it however you want, but you need to do it three times before the crops fully grow. Uh, and once again, well, I'll show you doing that uh, while we're going. Let's take a look here at this tractor. All right, so... The, I, I'd say priority-wise on this farm, the first thing we probably need to do is to harvest this grown stuff. Because if this goes bad, we lose it. So that's going to be a priority. Um, the second thing we should do is we probably need to look at getting a plow because this farm I don't think has a plow. Here's how we check. There's two ways. You can go into your escape menu. You can see down on the bottom right-hand corner here we have uh, a filter and we have information about the different equipment. Here we have a uh, 8340 New Holland. We have our pickup truck. We have two case tractors. We have an axial flow case um, harvester. We have our, our tipper to collect the wheat and or whatever the grain is that we're collecting off the field. We have our cultivator, not a plow, but a cultivator. We have a header that's going to go on the front of the harvester to collect. Uh, and we have a seeder. Now, this header only works with, it works with uh, most of the crops in the game. It's going to work with um, wheat, barley, canola, um, and what was the other one? Uh, soybean. Now, there is another header that you can get in the store that does corn and sunflowers. And then for potatoes and sugar beets and sugar cane, if you have the expansion, um, there are different types of harvesters that you have to use. These harvesters don't work with those crops. Um, sometimes some of the mods that are out there can add Oats and rye. Oats and rye will also work with this type of header. It's called a thresher or pin. Some people call it a pinwheel header, but um, it th basically threshes the crop. It cuts them at the bottom. They even call them cutters sometimes, too. There's so many names for this thing. And uh, so uh, what we, we basically have is this, these things grab the wheat and shove it down there, and you get the cutter, and it pushes the wheat into the harvester. The harvester will take that. It'll um, chop the... Um, It'll chop the heads off this stuff, and basically these grains will come out, and that gets put in the hopper up up in there, and then the the leftover will either be chopped up and spread all over the field, or you can leave them in trails and collect it later to feed to your cows, and make straw basically. Uh, I'm going to leave the straw feature on. We can talk about that later. Straw is nice because you can either, you can sell it um, at the red barn over here. See this red barn up here? Most maps have some sort of red barn that you can sell it at and if we look at our map once again by pressing escape this says barn um not not all the maps have sometimes they'll have a picture of um a round bale I'm trying to see if there's any on the map no there's not this map unfortunately doesn't have the round bale one but 
Um, sometimes they're hard to find, but almost every map, even the mod maps, have a place to sell your bales. Um, as you can see the symbol up there, and this is, we can go up here and check, check this question mark. It says, getting rid of straw and hay. This is where you sell it. So I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. Um, but for now, we're going to go ahead and start the harvester. And over there, you can see we've got this guy ready to go. He's got our um, trailer. And so we're going to go ahead and put this harvester to use. Now, I do have a tutorial called How to Start Your Farm. Um, and that is going to be not necessarily a how to play guide, but a it's going to be a, um, a, a guide about financial decisions. This farm comes with really old equipment. All these tractors are really old. This harvester is old. And they cost a lot of money to run every day because they're old. Um, in that video, I will give you suggestions on how to um, sell and buy new equipment. You're going to keep the harvester because you're not going to be able to afford Even if you take your full loan out, you're not going to be able to afford a bigger harvester. But you'll be able to get a new tractor, some faster seeding equipment, things that you really need for the farm. So uh, I will put a link to that video in the description. Uh, once again, that's called How to Start Your Farm. This is more about how to actually, this is a, the basic tutorial on how to actually do farming. So uh, that one's more about how to operate a farm financially successfully. This one's more about having fun. And, and for those of you that have never played this game before. So the first thing we have here, you can see the header has been parked conveniently right in front of the harvester. We have to move up to it. And I'm going to show you my little help menu. And when I get close enough, you'll notice here, um, it's going to give you a thing. Do you see how that appeared? It says, oh. Attach up at the top there. It says now the, if I back away, the attach disappears. You'll also notice if you don't have that menu open, down on the bottom right hand corner by my speedometer where it says 30 see the hours. That tells you how many hours this harvester has, by the way. It's got 30 hours on it, which is a lot in this game. You'll see a little, see that? That little ball and socket picture. It's going to disappear. It's at the bottom right there. Keep watching. As I back up, it disappears and it reappears. I'm making it kind of disappear and reappear. That little ball and socket means that you can attach to whatever is in front or behind you by pressing, in my case, it's the Q key. And there you go, so we pick the header up and it's now attached. Now this is confusing. Uh, on most of the tractors, when you pick something up, it stays selected, okay? On the harvester, it automatically goes back to the harvester. I'm not sure why they did that, but it does. So you'll notice also in that same bottom right corner, if you look to the left, there's a picture of a tractor and then there's like a gray thing on the front. If you pr press your select key, or whatever key is is to select. I think on the computer it's G. See that? It goes back and forth between the header and the tractor. Now if I press the tractor, I cannot drop the header. But if I pick the header, I can drop it and put it back off again. So you can see the, how that works. So you need to have the, the header selected to drop it. Some people I've had comments like, how do I get this thing off? That's how you get it off. Okay, the next thing that we have to do is we have to open... The harvester and once again you can see on mine it says unfold harvester it's the x key on the computer you can see that little top open up i'm going to do that again so you can see the top opening and closing you see that what this does is it allows air to get in and it also allows the grain to stack up as high as it possibly can now later on when the harvester is full you're going to put your pipe out you can see the pipe out button there and that brings the pipe out so that you can unload whatever's in the, hop the hopper there into your tipper that green trailer over there. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this guy on. So he's ready to go. The, the pipe's away. I don't need it open right now. Um, you can see here it says um, to turn on the harvester, you press the B key. Now, once again, yours will say a different thing if you're on a console, but it's the same idea. And there we go. Harvester's on. And if I pull my right trigger, for those of you on the console, for those of you playing on the PC, it's either your W key or gas pedal if you're using a steering wheel like I am. And we're going to start harvesting. You'll notice my harvester is pooping out straw, right? That's the straw I was talking about. That It leaves that behind. And you can collect that later and um, feed it to your animals. And um, let's see here. So uh, I can also use a cruise control button. For PC users, it's number three. It means I don't have to hold the gas down. You'll see down at the bottom right there where the spit that says 14... Watch what happens if I press the 3 key. It turns green. That means my cruise control is on. Just like a real car, if I want to disable the cruise control, I press the brake. Or I can press 3 again and it will turn it back off. Um, now, if you don't want to get straw, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you really don't want to have straw, on my computer you press the comma key. I'm not sure what it is you press on the console, but if I press that, you can see it turns the straw swath off and just chops it up. But we want to keep it. 
So there's that. I've gotten down to the end. I'm going to slow down a little bit, but I'm going to keep rolling until that straw comes out because I don't want to make a big pile. And now I'm going to press the raise button and I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to turn the harvester off. There we go. And I'm going to make a U-turn here. And you probably have to back it up because it's not going to make a tight enough turn. There we go. I'm going to back this harvester up and move forward again. And you can see here I'm going to line up with the field. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the harvester back on again. And I'm going to start my cruise control. And I'm going to just drive in a nice straight line down the field. And you can see there uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a little blue icon of wheat. And the numbers are raising up. And you can see that, that what that means is that uh, we are collecting wheat. And uh, as that gets all the way full, we'll have to stop and empty. But we can keep running it until it gets pretty full. Now... Uh, the other thing that we're going to show you, uh, I'm going to hire a worker to do this so I can get working on my other fields. Now, it costs money, so be aware. The workers are fairly cheap. It's like $1,000 an hour, but they'll get this field done in like 10 minutes. So you're going to end up paying like maybe three or $400 to have them do the field. Uh, so once he gets done with this pass, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i hire a worker, and, uh, and then we can just hop out and do something else. And we'll let him finish his job here. This field probably, the harvester will probably fill up about halfway when, it, when it's about halfway done with the field. I think we'll have to stop twice to unload it. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, once again, I'm not running any mods. There's lots of mods you can add to the game that change it, but we are looking at a modless game right now for those of you uh, out there that are just starting. You're not into mods yet. So I'm going to press H on my keyboard. I don't know what it is for you guys, but H on the computer is higher worker. And I'm going to stop saying I don't know what it is for you guys because you figured that out by now. So I'm going to hop out, let that guy go, and there he goes. He's off harvesting. Um, on these nice big square fields, they don't get lost, but sometimes they do. <laughs> if you have a funky, weird, curvy field, the, sometimes the workers get lost or don't do a good job. It is what it is, folks. Um, so now, let's take a look at what we have financially. What We're going to let that go for a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll, we're going to hop in here to the menu, and while we're doing this, the game doesn't actually stop moving. It keeps going, so the harvester is still going to be working while we're doing this. Um, if we look at our store... Um, and we're going to go here. So you're going to click on the right button until you see prices. You're going to see here that they have given us kindly a little bit of crop to sell. Now, I'm going to wait till I have all the wheat collected and then sell this all at once so that I don't. Because if you sell them little bits, the prices start to drop and you don't get as much money. So you want to try to sell everything at once if you can. In fact, you might even want to get a second tipper so that you can haul it all. Each tipper that we have, I think, holds like 10,000 liters. Uh, maybe 13 or 8. Actually, those metal techs are 8,000, I think. So you'd have to get two of them probably to get all that wheat. Um, or a bigger tipper if you want to sell them. But we're going to, with all, you know, what I do is I'd wait till you're done harvesting. And once the harvest is over, I would look at selling all of this stuff and see how much money you have. The, the, the goal is to avoid taking out a loan. You already have a $75,000 loan that you have to pay off. Um, if you increase that loan, which you may have to do, um, your profits are going to go down. So there's two ways to handle this. You can either just keep growing the crops with what you have, not bother plowing. And a lot of farmers in the U.S. in real life don't plow. Or you can take a loan out and buy a plow and buy lots of fertilization equipment and try to get as much from your crops as possible. The other way to do it is to um, just keep going without upgrading your equipment. And then when you have enough money saved buy the equipment um you might be able to do it in maybe five or six uh rounds of harvesting now uh the crop does grow overnight so you're going to get a lot of crop i mean it's not like real life where you have to wait a year between it, it grows every night so uh in about 20 i think it's like 36 hours every the crop comes up every 36 hours um so for this video we are going to go ahead and buy we're going to take out more of a loan out and buy the equipment um, simply because I want to show you guys how to uh, do that. Okay, I'm going to connect this trailer here. We're going to catch up. The harvester is starting to get full. So we're going to start this guy up and run over there and empty him out as he's running. We're going to do what's called a flying unload. I don't know what they really call it. I'm just making that up. Uh, what you do is you're going to run up on the row, nice and straight, on the row of um, wheat that has already been harvested. and Pull forward. Just try to stay there like that. You don't want to hit him because you're going to knock. if you knock him over, he'll miss crop. But... Uh, now they average the harvesters run about six kilometers. I'm sorry, six miles an hour between five and six. Usually six on flat ground. 
So the, you're going to want to keep your speed around there using a gas pedal. You can also use the cruise control. Some guys just set the cruise control to, to six um, and then put the cruise control on and just stay with the tractor. With the gas pedal, it's pretty easy to do. But uh, right here, when he gets to the end, he'll stop and actually keep unloading until he's empty all the way. So we can just kind of hang here until he's done. He'll, you'll see him come back up and he'll wait. Or is it a she? Nope, it's a he today. We do have, this is a female-friendly game. There are female farmers in it. Um, all right, so while we're waiting, I'm going to show you how to load and unload this trailer um, so you can see where we store our wheat. And you'll also see why you need a bigger tipper because this tipper already is over halfway full. And uh, this we already have more than that in storage, but whatever. For a starter tipper working around the fields, it's not too bad. And the tippers aren't ridiculously expensive, but once again... You can see why there's a pressure to take out a loan because there's a lot of equipment that you could be a lot more efficient with. Otherwise, you're going to have to make like 50 trips to the store when you go to deliver this. Uh, all right, so we're going to park up on this uh, unloading area, and you can see it's marked off with yellow markers. Usually the places in the game where you sell stuff are marked with yellow markers. You can see the markers over there by the barn. In fact, I'll run over there just so you can... Whoops! See it? Yeah, we know it's a silo. You can see that. See the yellow markers? That means you can sell wheat there. Or the straw. I'm sorry, not wheat. Oh, I drove over a hole. Look, my tractor is precariously hanging there. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and unload this. You press the dump button. Once again, oh, I'm going to show you this. Uh, if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a picture of a tipper. See that tipper down there? And it's opening up. Uh, once again, very bottom right-hand corner by my speedometer, but even further to the bottom right. If I go forward, you'll see that disappear. If I get out of... If I get it out... That's my phone, by the way, if you're wondering. Um... But here, so I can tip here, and it's going to go up and dump out the back. And that stuff is going into the silo. Now, you do have, I think, 100,000 liter capacity on your silo. Uh, we just put 5,000 in. And then we can come around on this side later uh, when we need to get the crop back out again. And it holds all kinds of crops. We'll go through that. Um, and there are extended ones that come with the mods, but this is the one we have for this. Pull in underneath so that you're underneath the spigot. You can see there we're underneath it directly. And I press the... Well, I think it's the R button for most people, but for me, it's some other button that I mapped. And you can see here we have 13,000 wheat. I can also pick barley, canola, sunflowers, soybean, corn, wheat, <laughs> and uh, then fill it up all the way by pressing the check mark. And that, since I have so much wheat, this tractor will, or this trailer will actually fill up all the way, 8,000, like I said. And I can even cover it. There's a button to cover stuff. I think it's, it's no, it's not that one. It's this one? No. There is one, I swear. There it is, that button. And I can cover it up and store it for later. But, um, yeah, that's how, we, that's how we do that. So as you're collecting crop off your fields and you get full up, you can come over here and dump them off. You don't have to sell them right away. You can wait till the harvest is done and then, you know, rent a truck or something and sell them. Uh, about rentals, you can rent equipment in this game. It is really expensive. Um, a plow might be worth renting, though, because you only use it once every three harvests. So you could probably rent it for overall maybe like $3,000 when all said and done. But you would never have to get it back out again, you know, for another three years, for another not three years, but another three harvests. So you could just rent, you could rent one and then, you know, that's the, probably what we will do actually. And I'll show you how to do that. So you can, you can lease it and you only have to use it for the fields and you take it back to the shop when you're done. Um, they do charge you an hourly rate. So be aware of that. Every hour that, that you put on it is charged. So. So anyway, I just thought I'd share those things with you while we were waiting for the harvest to complete his job. And so I'm going to wait here and turn the tractor off. The other thing that you want to know, you can see this tractor has 28.1 hours. If you look down the bottom right-hand corner, just below my speedometer, if the tractor is turned off and you're still sitting in the tractor, that counts as hours. So make sure that you jump out of the tractor and don't just sit in your tractors. If you sit in them, you're going to build hours up. Now, one thing to cover while this is going, a little helpful tip. If you're in the middle of the game and you got, oh my gosh, I need to run to the store, but I want to leave the game running, or I don't want, I don't have time to save, or whatever, for whatever reason you need to pause, you can always go to the pause menu, and you can go here. And once you get to, there's a certain, this one, the game settings, down here there's an actual pause. Now that really actually pauses the game. Right now the harvester is not working. Time is not going by. If you, for some reason, need to leave but you don't want to turn the game off, make sure you pause it um, 
unless you want the harvester to keep running or you have people playing on a multiplayer server. But this stops time. If I run it again now, time is back up and running. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything other things we could show you while he's harvesting. I suppose we could go to the shop. So for me, it's the P key. I'm not sure what it is for you. Probably select. I think start opens the regular menu and select opens the the uh, garage menu. What this does is this takes us to the dealership. Um, now, prices are the same here as if you went to the actual dealership. However, if you're going to sell something, let's say you don't want that tipper and you want a bigger one and you're going to sell it, going to the store and selling it at the store will give you more money, 25% more money or 20% more money than if you sell it from here. So don't sell stuff from this menu. Go to the store and sell it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're losing out on about a third of your profit So, or of your sale. Uh, there's no profit because obviously every time you sell something that you've already owned, you're losing money. Um, now, these tractors, if you, if you go to the shop, you have all the different equipment that you can buy. We've got harvesters like what we're using, bigger harvesters with bigger headers, bigger tractors, bigger trucks, tippers, everything that you could possibly need to do farming. Uh, if you go down to the bottom, you can click this here. And I'm sorry, my girlfriend keeps texting. So <laughs> um, there are this shows you all of the equipment that you own. And it has detailed information. So this one's 48 days old. It's got 26 hours. This is New Holland. It's worth 21000 if you sell it from here. Now, if you take it to the shop, you'll get about 28000 for it. So once again, take it to the shop. Um, it's costing you $517 a day. This tractor, $697 a day. That adds up if you're not making a lot of money. Um, this one has 28 hours. This guy's got 35 hours. It's $808 a day. Um, this guy's got, this is your harvester. He's costing you almost $2,000 a day. <laughs> that's one that you probably should replace as soon as you possibly can. They're always expensive, but that's really expensive. Um, your tipper's a piece of crap. <laughs> it's only $12 a day, though. Um, it shows you all the things that you can be into. But anyway, this shows you a list of the things that you can have. You can also sell your shelters. I keep them. I don't know. Um, so that is the store. And once again, it shows you what you have. If you lease something, you click up here, you'll actually, you can you click that. It takes you between what you own and what you leased. Uh, and from here, you can actually return your lease. Now, I have nothing to return because I'm not leasing anything. But we'll show you that again when we go to lease the plow. Um, but yeah, so. That is the menu. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you. Um, they do sell washers. Your tractors will get dirty, very dirty over time. Um, it's a $5,000 purchase. You can place it anywhere you want. If we go here, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, and I'm, as you guys know, from if you've uh, been around my channel at all, I love to clean my tractors. I hate having dirty tractors. But um, here we have it. It's $4,500. We click on it, and then it gives us this overview, and we can fly around the, the, mop, the map. The mop. We can fly around the mop. And uh, we can sell or place this. I usually put it like somewhere around here because this is kind of by where we park stuff. Uh, obviously, we put it right there. Uh, and then when we want to clean our tractor, you press escape to get back out or whatever, select or start or however you exit out in your version of the game. Uh, let's go wash this thing while that guy's harvesting. So I'm going to start the tractor up. And we're going to drive down there and wash this dirty tractor off. Once again, it's a pet peeve. Super exciting part of the video here. Super important information. It does nothing. For those of you that get all excited and go, oh, do you have to maintain your tractors? Nope, this does nothing to maintain your tractor. And there is no maintenance in the game. Basically, just paying that daily fee is what maintains the tractors. So, a little bit of a disappointment, but it seemed to be, the, for them, the easiest way to handle it. And you can clean your tipper off. You can see the tipper's dirty. And as, we, as we clean it, you just sit here and spray water on it. Oh, and the harvester's yelling for help. He's 80% full. So let's go out there and empty him out because that's what we're here for, right? That is our job as a farmer is to help our helpers and get the job done. Once again, as you upgrade your harvesters, they'll get bigger headers and bigger capacity tanks and basically they still run out in the same amount of time because they're everything's bigger they end up filling up just as fast but you get way more grain out of them and this tipper would make you cry because it'll you'd never be able to empty one of those bigger harvesters with this tipper it's not big enough as he runs the crop over there that's beautiful <laughs> in real life you get fired for that 
Why are you keep running the crap over? Now, one of the things you can do, like I said, I'm going to try this. We're going to actually set our cruise control for six. There's two sixes, one that's a little faster <laughs> and one that's a little slower. And the slower one seems to be the one that you um, you want to use to follow a harvester. You'll keep right up with them. Um, on the keyboard, it is the one and two key. Once again, I think it's like shift something or other on the joystick. Uh, but if you need to speed up, you can click it up. If you need to slow down, you can click it down. And But it's nice not to have to keep your foot on the gas the whole time you're following this dude. So he's going to stop, and we're going to stop, and we're going to let him. He's going to he'll back up because he's still trying to keep the straw nice and even. And he'll come back forward and dump the rest out. Oh, he must have been empty already because he's still going. So there we go. All right, so I'm going to let that guy finish, and we will catch up for the end of the video at that point, uh, and we'll move on. In the next video, we'll talk about renting the plow and getting these fields ready for planting because they're all kind of ready except for this one. We'll need to collect the straw off of this field too. We'll do that. This harvester is finished. So we'll, the worker will quit. You can see it says, Helper B has completed their task. He's done. Taskmaster. Beastmaster. Uh, all right, so we're going to let this tractor run, and we're going to hop over into the harvester. And it, he turns it off when he leaves it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the pipe away, which was the O button, if I remember right. And I gotta find, It's different on mine because I, I assigned different controls. And then we're going to fold this bad boy up. And I'm just going to park it here on the sidelines. And so for the last part of this video, we're going to sell some wheat. Um, and I'll show you how to find the best price and sell it. So there we go. The harvester's parked for the night. And we're going to hop in this guy and fill it up the rest of the way. There still should be some space left in this hopper. Yep. Oops, I forgot I left it running. So let's hop on over to our silo and fill her up. Perfect. All right, we're going to fill this bad boy up by pressing the, oh, what key is it? It's this key. There we go. And I wasn't under all the way. That's why I had a hard time. Okay, so now we're going to go to our menu and we're going to look at our prices list um, because see, we still have 12,000 grain in that's why you need a bigger tipper I would say just take the loan out or sell equipment like sell one of the tractors this one the agri liner either of these agri liners is a good deal they hold 21,000 liters so you'll be able to get most of your crop in one of them you can also uh, link these together and buy so you can buy two of these and have a train um, same with these Actually, this would be a good front one because it's easy to back and then have this as the secondary. So um, let's go ahead, though. Oh, I forgot to show you. <laughs> e All right, so we're going to go here and we're going to look uh, with the wheat. We look at the best price. So right now, Wright Agribusiness is selling this for $811. We can take per liter, I think is how that goes. Maplefield Mills is up there. Goldcrest Pacific Grain is at seven sixty two. So you just kind of look through all the prices and see the highest one. Right Agribusiness is the highest. You can double click on this thing to turn it. This will put a marker on your map. So now if we look at our map, you can see Right Agribusiness is up there flashing. It's up by field one. It's quite a drive. Let's go ahead and drive over there. So I'm going to take a little ride. Got to be careful, cover the crop. It doesn't really do anything. People are like, does it Does it really make a difference when you cover your crop? No, it doesn't. But I like to do it just because I'm picky. So I'm going to cover that up, and I'm going to head up to the right agro business, and we will see you guys up there when I arrive. Once again, the better thing to do literally would be to get a bigger tipper and sell all of your wheat at once because once I do this, that nice price at right agro business is going to drop. Within 10 minutes, it'll crash. You'll also notice as we get closer to right agribusiness, I'm still pretty far away away, but there's a glowing green beacon in the sky. It's like a the bat signal that goes up forever into eternity. That is our um, denotation that marks where we need to go with this load. Uh, that's where right agribusiness is. I might have taken the wrong road here. I thought this would be the faster way to go, but apparently I went the wrong way. So anyway, catch you when we're there. All right, we've arrived at Wright Agribusiness, and the same thing as our silo. We're going to pull up here, 
And we're gonna dump. Here we go. Dump. You can see our money going up. Not much though. <laughs> Even on normal, we don't make a ton of money. That's a very small load. Six thousand four hundred and ninety five dollars has been sold. We still have probably another ten thousand dollars worth back at the farm, so about sixteen thousand dollars worth of wheat. But that's a little disappointing. Eh, what can you do? All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you've enjoyed this first uh, tutorial, first day look. Um, in the next one, we're going to cover renting a plow and uh, getting your fields prepped. So plowing and cultivation along with um, seeding. And that will go pretty fast. This was kind of a longer episode because we're covering a lot of the menu system along with how to operate the equipment. Um, once again, you know, the you can disconnect the trailers. I've, I've kind of showed you how to do some of the very basic things about the game. So the next tutorial will go a little bit faster as we get into the actual farming portion of Farm Sim. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully it's helpful. Oh, and one quick thing, too. I wanted to cover this. Before we say goodnight, I wanted to show you this. If you ever get stuck, like your tractor crashes and falls in the river, um, you can always go into your menu. And back to your main page here and where it shows the equipment down the bottom if you click on each piece it'll show you where it's located on the map you see there that's right now it's the blue one is what I'm selected if I click on this it goes over here by the farm because that's where that is that's highlighted right now now we get the New Holland right there if I click on these things it also takes you to that uh, if I click here where I'm at, I am it clicks on my tractor that I'm in I can reset this and it goes down here to the shop, to the store. Um, so uh, if you ever get stuck or whatever, you can reset this to the store. You can also go, you, any piece of equipment that you own can be reset to the store. So if you ever lose something or can't find it or just going crazy or stuck or flipped, you can always reset it to the shop. So I thought I'd give you that helpful hint. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help. And we'll see you for the next exciting tutorial of how to play farm sim 17 a beginner's guide have a great night guys uh, thumbs up always help and we will see you next time on the farm